I cannot ring suite 1026 before 11.30. I'm sorry, sir, never before 11.30. Counting department, COD for 1026. Mail for 1026? For 1026? Well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, stupid. Nice ham. <laughs> you said that in Vienna. Not about ham. Most certainly about ham. That was Wiener Schnitzel. I remember distinctly arguing about the relationship of a cow to a calf. <laughs> Jerry, you're an idiot. You said that in Vienna. And London and Rome and a few other places. Say, was that a party last night? Didn't I tell you we'd have a great time in China? Didn't I? Mm, you certainly did. Let me see, what was I last night? It was something special. Oh, sure, I was emperor of all China. The emperor of all China. Well, emperor, I guess there's a little message for you. Seems some of your subjects are getting a little restless. Would that be by any chance the bill? Hmm. Good morning, emperor. Have we been here three weeks? We haven't. We've had a swell time. Now I suppose you haven't the $800. Will you have some more ham, Emperor? Have faith, little one. Mm, I have, but not $800 worth. Hey, there's a time for fooling. You've always said there was no time for anything else but fooling. <laughs> well, who am I to disturb a genius? Oh, I'm not hungry either. Is it the fire escape? Well, it looks like the old boy has got to go to work. Any ideas, may I ask? My dear, you're talking to a businessman. You ought to know that by this time. Uh, I do. But $805 is the record. Who do you love? My emperor. Always brings home the bacon, doesn't he? Always. Uh, we mustn't mix pleasure with business. Just as you say, dear. And uh, what is my little woman fixing for dinner tonight? Uh. It's probably right there. Uh, as a matter of fact, just between you and me, we may dine on a boat tonight. You know how it is. We like to move. Don't we, though? Goodbye, little woman. Goodbye, Emperor. Good morning, Mr. Day. Good morning, Mr. Ling. Mr. Day, it is indeed most disagreeable to me, but... Yes? I need not impress upon you the urgency of, uh, well, your bill. Oh, no need at all. Uh, the matter of fact, uh, I am expecting the auditor today. It will be very awkward for me if... Uh, oh, uh, the auditor, I understand. As it happens, I was just on my way downstairs now. I'll see you later, Mr. Ling. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Ling. Thanks. 
<laughs> Thank you. Hello. Occidental Hotel? The manager, Mr. Ling, please. The desk clerk at a hotel, Cinemana, speaking. Mr. Ling? The auditor is here, sir. Yes, we'll show him every courtesy. Yes. Yes, sir. Mr. Ling conveys his compliments, Mr. Daly, and says he will come over whenever you wish to see him. Uh, my very best compliments to Mr. Ling, and, uh, and tell him there's no hurry whatsoever. I have a great deal to do. As a matter of fact, I'd rather not see Mr. Ling till evening. I'm the assistant manager. Consider us all at your command, sir. Oh, thank you. And uh, will you have the ledger sent up? I expect to be very busy, and I don't wish to be disturbed. Yes, sir. Boy. Sweet 205. Mr. O'Neill, please, room 327. Mr. O'Neill, I'm merely fulfilling my obligation to this firm, but I must ask you to meet your bill immediately. But Run. I haven't the money. Mr. O'Neill, uh, in a situation like this, we make great allowances for cash. Well, Mr. Daly, if I had any cash, I, I might dig up 50. For a hundred, we'll cancel the whole bill. It's a deal. Mrs. Frank Newman, please. Uh, room 425. Let's see. 500, 1, 2, 350 makes $850. That's right. Thank you. I'm going to the Sino Mano Hotel. The auditor is there. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Day. Good afternoon, Mr. Ling. I hope you have enjoyed your stay with us. Good day, Mr. Ling. Put them down here. Whee! Well, we made it. Again. You know, I've decided to write a book. My Breathless Years. Will I be in it? Yes, but I don't think you'll stay long. I'll kill you off early. Not getting tired of it all by any chance? Never a dull moment, darling. Good girl. Here, you forgot these this morning. By the way, where are we going? Mm, boat stops at Yokohama first. We'll see how we feel when we get there. I was afraid of that. Well, 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 this is different. Tony. What? Darling, we're rich. <laughs> Again? That's not. <laughs> this letter's from my brother-in-law. He's been uh, looking after the baby. Baby? Yeah, listen. What baby? My baby. Wait a minute, Jerry. You mean that you have a child? That's right. Didn't I tell you? No. She must be five or six by now. I don't know exactly. Well, for a man who talks so much, you say very little. I, I told you I was married. Yes. She died some time ago. Oh. The point is, my wife's family wanted to deny me the privilege of parenthood. I've been looking for that brother-in-law of mine for a long time, and now he wants my baby. Well, he's going to get her. And it'll cost him exactly $75,000. Jerry. $75,000. What a beautiful world. We'll take the first boat out of Yokohama to San Francisco. From San Francisco, we'll hop a plane to... Hey, do you realize we've never been in New York together? Mm. Well, darling, it's going to be marvelous. You and I in New York? Why, it's... It's... Gonna... The black tin on the red tin. Of course, we'll have to stop off in Connecticut first to... Uh, 
pick up the money. My wife's family live there, which is practically the only thing wrong with Connecticut. Who do you love? Jerry, don't go to Connecticut. Why, how else can we get the money? Don't get it. I don't understand. Jerry, don't even want to go. Oh, now I'm getting it. Not a nice way to make money, huh? Not a bit nice. Well, I didn't know we were nice. Come on, think of New York. That'll be nice. I'm leaving for Paris in the morning. You mean... You mean you'll meet me in Paris when I come back? I don't know. You're tired of chasing trains is what you really mean. Jerry, you once said we belonged because we both hated life. Neither of us knew quite what we wanted. Well, we've had three years of this now. Are we any near to knowing? Uh, I'll answer that by asking you, do you wish we were settled down and it were our kid? Do you? No. I don't think I do either, but I wish we wanted to. You're tired of chasing trains, all right. Jerry, don't go. She is your child. You can't take advantage of that. She's yours. But 75,000 bucks is 75,000 bucks. Well, you're the emperor. And you'll meet me in Paris? I'll know that when I'm in Paris. Well, you're the empress. Good night, Empress. And we need scarcely point out that your mode of life is not one that fits you to bring up a child, my sister's child. Just as stuffy as ever in here. However, I have no desire to... I have no desire to criticize your mode of life. Oh, no, no. We are... We are concerned only with the welfare of the child. Hmm, of course. Therefore, I have had Mr. Clark draw up a document which covers every phase of the matter. You agree to surrender the child. I agree to adopt her. That's a lot of words. How long would it take a lawyer to say the black cat of my aunt has 18 kittens? Really, Mr. This Day, This is no time for levity. When does the levity begin around here? Are we to understand that you refuse to accept Mr. Higginson's generous offer without even... Uh... Considering the type of person we have to deal with, we thought it might come to that. You knew it would come to that. How much do you want? $75,000. Why, that's ridiculous. An outrage. Blackmail. I won't be held up this way. I told you, Clark, he was a scoundrel. Oh, so you told him. And I'll give you 20000 and not another penny. Well? Magnificent, huh? You know, we can manufacture these for almost nothing and sell them at the five and ten. Make a fortune. No charge for the idea. Hi, I take it I'm not invited for lunch, so I'll move along. I'll be out in the garden when you make up your mind to pay me the 75,000. Oh, 40,000 then. Five years ago, when you removed me from the bosom of the family, you called me a blackguard and a cad. 40,000 will just pay for the blackguard. The cad will cost you 35,000 more. Make up your mind and don't take too long about it. You see, Mr. Cosgrove, the gypsy chief asked me if you wouldn't like to have his gypsies camp in your lawn. It's too bad, Mr. Cosgrove. 
that the noise disturbed you. But you see, sometimes they have the most marvelous parties, and hundreds of gypsies come from Spain and every place. They have had such a good time that they forget. Hello. Uh, I'm looking for an old friend of mine, a Mr. Cosgrove. Oh, do you know him? Oh, very well. Uh, may I sit down there with you? Please do. Having any fun today? I've been sailing my boat around the island. I wanted to see where the pirates camped last night. Well, do you keep your sailboat padlocked to the dock so the pirates can't steal it? No. Uncle George keeps it padlocked so I won't sail it alone. He's afraid. You see, I didn't really sail around the island. Not Honor Bright. Honor Bright? Yes. You can only say that when it's honest to goodness true. Oh. Well, where did you learn that? From my mother. You see, pirates are true, all right, but not Honor Bright true. Oh, of course. <laughs> What's your name? Jerry. Mine is Penny Day. Mm, I had an idea it might be. Uh, are you a good sailor? I could be, on a bright. But he won't let me. Why not? Oh, I guess Uncle George just doesn't believe in people having fun. Mm, I've noticed that. Let's go sailing. Oh, I'd love it. But... I learned a magic trick about padlocks in India. Really? Honor bright? Honor bright. Focus, focus. Dominocus. <laughs> uh, should we take Mr. Cosgrove along? Of course. You'll come, won't you, Mr. Cosgrove? You sit right there, Mr. Cosgrove. There. Whoa, oh, be careful, Mr. Cosgrove. There. So this is their island, huh? Yes, and we'll have to be very careful. They may be hiding in the woods. Where did you see them hide the treasure? Right over there. Right there? I forgot to tell you. Last night, the pirates came took the treasure away. Hmm. You're Penny Day, all right. Well, there may be some left. Come on, let's both dig. You dig there. See? You dig there. Look! Look what I found! Chinese money. The treasure. Sure enough. Look! Why, a shilling. We'd better hurry. The enemy's coming. Adventure. The best I've had in a long time, too. We'll have to surrender now. I wish we brought some guns along. Goodbye, Penny. What have you got in your hand? Nothing much. Open your hand. Hm. Why can't you let her alone? I insist on being obeyed. Now go to your room at once. Afraid she might be having a little fun, huh? It's discipline she needs, not fun. Well, I've decided to make you a final offer, final, of $60,000. Poor child. I said $60,000. Listen, my dear brother-in-law, 
You've always had the idea that it was sort of your duty to run other people's lives. You wrecked your sisters. By your interference, you pretty well kicked mine over, and now you want to keep all the fun out of Penny's well. And you've actually got the gall to think that Elsie could have been happy with you? She was, so long as you left us alone. Mm. Impossible as that may seem to you, my dear Jason. You got away with your interfering before, but not now. Penny! Oh, all right, 75,000. Penny! Think of that child. I am. Penny, I'm your father. Oh, I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> Miss Day, this is New York. We're going to wrap it up, tie a string around it, and take it home with us. And, uh, we'll take these, too. <laughs> and this? Yeah, we'll, we'll have that. And, uh, here, 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 here. But, Daddy, I want to put it on. Uh, all right, uh, oh, you... Uh... Yes, I'll take her into the fitting room. Come, dear. Just a moment, please. Transfers. I'm saving them. See? I use them for money. Well, I haven't tried that yet. Is it anything serious, Doctor? Nothing that a dose of castor oil can't remedy. Castor oil? You mean, you mean I gotta give her castor oil? Yes, I do. She'll have to keep regular hours and eat the proper food. I'm gonna send her a diet which will not include hot dogs. See that she follows it. And I'm gonna send you a book you can use some information on the bringing up of a child. It's quite a job, you know. Yes, well, thank you, Doctor, for straightening us out. Not at all. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night. He was pretty mad at you, wasn't he, Daddy? Yeah. Drugstore, please. <laughs> My dear young woman, Life is not just a round of pleasure. We must take the bad with the good. This is the bad, and this is the good. Well, castor oil, I know. Take a spoonful of this, and I'll show you what that is. All right, I'll take it. But I'll keep my eyes shut. <clears throat> it reminds me of Uncle George. <laughs> no need to take this thing so seriously. Are you sure you like him? I'm just crazy about him. I'm awful crazy about you, too, Daddy. I've had such a good time. Well, now, now you go to sleep. And I'll be in the next room if you want me. Good night, Daddy. See, Mr. Cosgo, he doesn't realize that I'm too old to have a teddy bear. <laughs> Why, I gave up playing with such things years ago, Mr. Cosgo. You say that.
These samples just arrived this morning. They look pretty good, don't they? Oh, yes, they, uh, they, they, they certainly do. Now, these are from the face of the new crosscut on the 120-foot uh, level. H have you had them assayed yet? Uh, here are the reports. Uh, I had my attorney draw up the option. Huh. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you had company. Oh, come in, my dear. Come in. All right, come on in, dear. This is my daughter, Mr. Evans, Penelope, known as Penny. Young man, why haven't you told me about her before? Oh, we've always had so much business to discuss. Oh, that's no excuse. She's far more interesting than business. <laughs> How are you, my dear? Quite well, sir. Now. Now? Oh, bless me. <laughs> Have you been ill? Too many hot dogs and banana splits, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> now, uh, run right along, darling. Oh, no, no. Let us stay. Let us stay. Now, we'll, we'll get through with this business. Here's my certified check for $5,000 for the option. Now, if you'll be good enough to sign, I'll consider myself a mining man again. All right. So we had an old-fashioned tummy ache, did you? I'm afraid it was my own fault. He doesn't know anything about raising children. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, sir. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Goodbye, and thank you. Thank you both. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, I'll look you up at the bank tomorrow. Whew. What's the matter? Nothing. Not a thing. Everything is what is known as Jake. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're sailing for Europe. Yippee! <laughs> France gave the Statue of Liberty to the United States. It's awful big. I saw a picture of it once. I didn't think it was so big. And there's an elevator that goes right up to the head and the crown. And if you want to, you can get out at the throat, walk out on the shoulders, not on the arms, and even the fingers. Do you mean you can stand up and walk around the fingers? And all of them? Mm-hmm. Even the pinky? Mm-hmm. Were you ever there? Why, of course. Why, I met one of the most charming people I ever knew, right in the thumb. Really, Daddy? Who was he? Why, it was, uh, Mr., uh... Oh, Daddy, not Honor Bright. Well, no, not exactly. Oh, Daddy, there's Mr. Evans. Uh, yes, uh, should we take a stroll around the deck? See, maybe Mr. Evans would like to come with us. Oh, no, I don't think... Why, this is a pleasant surprise. Daddy was surprised, too. He's over there, see him? He's looking for us. Here we are, Daddy. Yeah. An unexpected pleasure, Mr. Day. <laughs> Quite. I owe you an explanation, Mr. Evans. You see, I had a message calling me to Europe suddenly. So I made arrangements with my attorney to meet you at the bank in the morning. Yeah, it's quite a coincidence, Mr. Day, because the same thing happened to me. And I instructed my attorney to be there in my place. Good day.
Is that what you was looking for? I nearly forgot. Does she look like me? Sure. The name is uh, Penny. Penny, this is Tony. How do you do? How do you do? And Penny, this is, well, uh, sort of your new mother. And Tony, this is, uh, well, I guess you'd sort of say our new daughter, huh? Mm. I guess you would. Well, you two girls ought to get along swell. Shall we go now, Daddy? Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Tony's going with us. Yes, Daddy, please. No, no, uh, we gotta get the bag. I'll see, Monsieur. Hello, my boy. <laughs> Where are you staying? I haven't decided yet. I'll look you up at the bank tomorrow. At the bank? Goodbye, Penny. Goodbye, Uncle Felix. <laughs> And who is Uncle Felix? He's a good friend of ours. We like him. He bought one of Daddy's ghoul mines. Come on, you women. This is no place to stand and gab. Here we are. I suppose you'd like to bathe. Can I help you? Thank you. I can manage alone. Oh, I should say she can. She's a very competent young lady. She's my daughter. In there, Penny. Well? Well, what happens now? What do you mean, dear? What happened? I mean, what happens now? Oh, you mean, what happens? Yes, what happens? Why, nothing. I mean... You mean nothing? No, I don't mean that at all. I mean... Look here, Tony. I know what's eating you. You think I haven't any business with that kid? Well, you're wrong, dead wrong. You haven't a thing to worry about. You wait and see. I see, and what's in the past is all completely in the past. Exactly. No more beating debts or dodging gentlemen in uniform, chasing trains. No more hurried departures from unpleasant scenes. Not a chance. Your only concern was for your daughter's future, and you want above everything to make her happy. Absolutely, dear. So you sold Uncle Felix the phony gold mine to get the money for the good time. Stop lying, Jerry. Lying? Yes, stop lying. It doesn't become you. I know exactly what you were thinking. Fun, excitement, thrills. You wouldn't know responsibility if you fell over one in the street. Well, suppose it was just that. What difference does it make? Just this. You've got to mean it. You're her father and she's yours. So you've got to quit selling gold mines. You can't take a child out of a good home and throw her into a life like this. Hey, wait a minute, Tony. What do you mean by a life like this? Your idea of how life should be lived. Cheap and gaudy and shallow. Have you found it like that? Sometimes. Now we're getting someplace. You're not talking about Penny, you're talking about yourself. That isn't so. Stop lying, Tony. It doesn't become you either. I took you from a good home into that kind of life. I wanted to go. You didn't take me. And in exchange for a decent husband, I gave you a guy who chases trains and deals in phony gold mines. That's what you're talking about. 
You wouldn't have done this to this child when we started. And if we've made ourselves that sort of people, where do we end up? We won't be very pretty people, will we? We won't even like ourselves very much. So love, where will that be? Because we won't be young anymore either. This turns gray someday, Jerry. Wrinkles come in, hips go out. And we won't have anything else to hold us together because we won't be that kind of people. Pretty, isn't it? Only it's a picture you'll never see. Because if you can't convince me right here in this room that you're through with gold mines, I'm through. Yes, I'm through, Mr. Emperor. The China walls are all yours. I've danced enough on top of them. I want some peace. You're right, Tony. I was lying and you knew it. Well, I'm not lying now. I don't want to quit. A job? Not me. I don't want any peace. Peace is what they call life out there, and I don't like life, Tony, any better than I ever did. Nothing can make me settle down. Nothing. Well, you've had enough of it, and I don't blame you. You want peace. Well, go out and get it. You know what you want, and I know what I want. At least we know that much, even if we couldn't find the secret between us. So that's goodbye and good luck. Wait a minute. I guess I should have known if I, I want you that I'll have to take you as you are. I don't like it, Jerry, but I've been without you for a long time and I like that less. So I know what I want and I don't get it. So I'm going to get the next best thing. I'm going to sell gold mines and chase trains again with you for as long as you want me. And if the trains wind up in rather ugly places, well, that's all right, too. We'll both be there together. Well, that wins. I guess now I'm going to get a job. I guess I'd be anything you want, Tony, if you love me that much. Don't say it unless you mean it. Who do you love? Daddy, something's caught. And I've been standing on my head almost. Let me do it. Thank you. I am very glad to meet you. I guess I should have said that at the station. And so should I. I'm sorry. Well, 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 that's better. We're going to have a lot of fun, we three. No, I mean, uh, well, that is. But Tony, you know. Somebody knows it. Was it you who rented a house yesterday to Mrs. Bradbury? I'll say I did, and it took me all day to do it. Well, the day wasn't long enough. You didn't rent it. It's got a blue tile bathroom, and she doesn't want it. Stop kidding. Let her do the kidding. She's on the phone now. Hello. Yes, Mrs. Bradbury. Uh, well, I didn't notice it was blue either, but isn't that all right? Uh, I don't think I understand, Mrs. Bradbury. Why can't you bathe in blue surroundings? Isn't the sea blue? Uh, well, what color were you looking for? You prefer pink? But uh, what's the other color? Hmm. Well, that's a fine house you're fixing up, Mrs. Bradbury. After all, the bathroom's a bathroom. You don't live in it. Oh, yes, yes. We have others, I guess. Why don't... 
Well, uh, well, I don't know exactly. Uh, I'm going out to lunch now. Well, maybe. Later sometime. Yes. I'll call you. Yes. Just as soon as I get around to it. Yes. Goodbye. Mr. Evans, Uncle Felix. Uh, well, what are you doing down here? Uh, how did you find me? Oh, I, I just happened to be here. And yesterday I was passing by when you left. I thought it was you, but I wasn't quite sure. And how's my little penny, eh? Never better. Now, oh, delightful child. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I promised to buy her a present on the boat. I wonder if you'd do me a favor and come with me uh, while I get it for her now. Oh, no, it's bothered me quite a bit. Oh, she's forgotten all about that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. Now, come along. Come along, and then we'll have a spot of lunch afterwards, eh? Well, all right. Happy. Now, right. look. Oh, that's too good for her. It's got a diamond. Yeah, I know. That's just what I want. Oh, I'm a nut on diamonds. Besides, nothing's too good for Penny. <laughs> oh, it'll <laughs> certainly make a hit. Yes, I, I'll take that one. Très bien, monsieur. Uh, about... Uh, Half a carat, that diamond, wouldn't you say? Just about. Yes. Oui, monsieur. A and a blue ridge, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oui, monsieur. I see you know something about diamond. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I do, yes. <laughs> oh, or a man must know about something. Uh, one man may know about uh, gold mines, and uh, another man may know about diamonds. Now, there. There, there, there's a tray of diamonds. Ah, oh, mais vous avez raison, monsieur. Mm. Right again. I think some of these are the finest stones I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. A genuine Jaeger. Ah, oh, mais oui, monsieur. Yeah, look, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Even I can tell it's pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah, pretty good, right. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, lend me your handkerchief for a moment, will you? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Now look. Look at it now. Mm, what a sweetheart. A sweetheart, a companion, and... Uh... <laughs> That's about all there is to it, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> I will wrap this up. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 don't bother. I, I'll take it just as it is. <laughs> there it is. And thank you. No, not at all, my dear boy, not at all. Now, what about that spot of lunch? I... Oh. Hmm. Mm hmm. What is it? What's the trouble? Oh, don't you hate to get something in your eye? What are you looking for? A handkerchief? Yes. Here, yeah. you haven't got one. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, what is that? That's a diamond. A few minutes ago, it was reposing in its tray. Now, in its place, is another diamond. But not a genuine Jaeger. I didn't think that the salesman would notice the difference, but uh, if he had, this little sparkler would have been found upon you, my dear boy, and not upon your dear old Uncle Felix. Hmm. I don't get one item. Why did you let me put it over on you in New York? Because I was quite sure that one day I would get my money back with interest. Oh, would you turn right around and repeat that sleight of hand act? There's nothing in my eye, and if I'm not mistaken, that's a cop down there. You don't want to talk to a cop any more than I do. And that is why, my dear boy, I let you swindle me, so that when this day came, you couldn't call a cop. Hmm. Now, what about that lunch? Hmm. Well, let's stop at the casino first and uh, get a drink. Uh -huh. Talking my language more every moment. Here's mud in your eye. I, you know, 
I never knew what that meant. Well, I didn't either until today. Down the hatch. Yeah, good luck. So you really retired, eh? I have. Happy? Very. And you make, uh, what, 35 a week? No. Well, a man can live on that. Sure. Have you made many friends since you've been here? No, not many. Oh, that's a pity. Oh, lovely people. Tell me, do you, by any chance, know that woman over there? No. seems the type of woman that might interest me a great deal. An unusual personality. I can see it from here. Well, yes, I can see it too. Yeah, I should like to meet her very much indeed. I think we might have a great many tastes in common. Jewels, for instance. Can't you see us uh, sitting at a little table discussing her jewels? Well, I'm thinking the jewels might get pretty bored. I don't think they'd be around very long. Oh, that's charming. <laughs> we will have another on that. Uh, bartender? Yes, sir? What has happened? <laughs> there must be thieves about, sir. Huh? exactly what you told me. Now, don't tell me wrong, then. Don't show me any more. I want to do it all myself. There's just no use at all. You'll never get it, and you just won't listen. Here, here, Penny, you shouldn't talk like that. And why shouldn't she? And what business is it of yours? Daddy, Daddy! So, you're her father. That's different. Mm, uh, you're Mrs. Crane, aren't you? I am. How did you know? Why, Penny, she must have... Yes, yeah, she should have. I'm nice. So is she. Well, I must go. Should have gone long ago if I'd had any sense. <laughs> Goodbye, old-timer. Goodbye. And you practice. I will. Goodbye. Bye. Time to go to bed, dear. Mm. Oh, all right. No, I meant Penny. Is it really? Doesn't the time go fast? It certainly does. Night, Daddy. Good night, sweetheart. Night, Tony. Mm, good night, darling. Don't forget, Daddy. I won't. Honor bright? Honor bright. Forget what, dear? Daddy's coming in and wash my back. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Jerry. Yes, dear? It's all right, isn't it, about Penny's school? The money, I mean, we still have it? Well, yes, of course, dear. What I mean is, it isn't too expensive, the one we picked out, is it? It'll be all right. A model father's got to give his child the best, hasn't he? You know best, Emperor. Jerry. Yes, dear? Am I dumb? What? Am I dumb to think we're both happy because I am? What are you talking about? I was never so happy in all my life. Please be. Don't you worry about that. Say, take a look at this. Was today payday or wasn't it? I ask you. 
There's thirty-five dollars here. Hmm, can't a guy get a raise? Got to buy a little ivy now and then, ain't we? Oh, Jerry. Who do you love? You're not so hot, young fella. I'm not even warm. Faites bonjour, mesdames. Thank you. Well, what's the matter? Been losing too much? Well, you can't hit them all the time. Thank you. Mr. Dave, just what is your business? I believe I told you real estate. Oh, don't get huffy. I'm so old and so rich, I can say anything I want to say without any of this fiddle-faddle. And Penny, doesn't she get in your way sometimes? Penny? Yes. Now, look here. It's none of my business, but I think there's something phony about you, young man. I've taken the trouble to ask a lot of questions about you. You don't make much money, and you spend a lot. Now, that sounds like adventure to me. And if that's true, Penny will get in your way someday. And when she does, I want to take her. But... Now, don't interrupt. <laughs> I'm kind of lonely old coot. I have plenty of money and no one to spend it on. And that child is the only human being I've ever found that I'd like to have around me as long as I live. I can make life perfectly swell for her, too. And I'd like to do it. Because, you see, I happen to have fallen in love with her. If I was offended before, I'm not now. But I don't think that day will ever come. Well, you'll never... <laughs> There's one thing you can do for me, though. She's going to school next week, isn't she? Yeah. I'd like her to spend her last weekend with me. <laughs> that means, I suppose, I'll have to ask you, too. <laughs> but I'd like to give her a party. Mm -hmm. That's pretty swell. Well, I'll call your wife. <sighs> Mr. Carlsgrove, can you imagine? Brandy. Where is she? Very nice, my dear boy. Very nice indeed. What's nice? Hmm. Making the acquaintance of the charming lady with the uh, <coughs> interesting personality. That had nothing whatever to do with you, dear Uncle Felix. She's a friend of Penny's and a good one. Well, so am I. Well, at least I'm trying to be. Indirectly, of course. Why, that necklace must be worth, uh, oh. The answer is still no, Uncle. Well, take your own time. How's the $35 a week? Just fine, thank you. I notice you were not particularly successful uh, in there. Uh, a few dollars. It seemed to trouble you a little. Well, if you ever need money, you know where I am. I'm going home, Uncle Felix, and I don't need a thing. 
Not a thing. You are a rat, Uncle Felix. Yes, I know. Sounds kind of dull to me. Now, I think she ought to paint. She has definite talent for dancing. I think she ought to dance. Paint. Dance. Say, you're pretty excited about this school for Penny, aren't you? <laughs> She's the first child I ever sent to school. Why shouldn't I be? No reason. You should be. Well, I can get Mary's bicycle for it. Who said I didn't want it? Here, I'm giving you really good for an old pair of skates. They aren't old skates, they're real ball bearings, see? Do you know where gold comes from? No. From a hole in the ground, way down deep. It takes them a long time to find it. Months, sometimes even years. That's why it's worth so much money. All right, all right, let's <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funny about it. No. No. I wouldn't miss this for the world. Hello. Hello. What are you doing? Putting on skates. Where did you get them? Oh, I just got them. I think you better give them back, don't you? She gave me this gold for keeps. I don't want them back. Let me see. Gold, Penny? Honor bright, Penny. They soaked his feet in mustard sauce, and he grew better soon. Now every day they hear him play and sing this little tune. Oh, I owe the world a living. Did that little little dum cut? Oh, I owe the world a living. Did that little little dum cut? I've got the best. 
that cool in my head. You ants were right. The type you said you got to work for all you get. Little that you little dumb cat. <laughs> I was wondering what he was doing back there in the window. He's being punished. He he gave me that gold. Oh. Maybe I'll forgive him now and take him down to the party. Oh, oh no. That's a very serious crime. I think we ought to put him way back in a dark closet. He'll be good then, I guess. We'd better put him in your closet. And then we'll get the ice cream. I'm gonna miss you at school. I'll miss you more. You have Tony. <laughs> but you've got Mr. Cosgrove. I don't give a hoot about the value of the necklace. Gigors are all right, but they're not important. It's the fact that somebody stole it. There's a thief around. Oh, I don't think it's any of you. And I don't like this business any better than you do. But it's out of my hands now, so let's get it over with as quickly as possible. Go ahead, Inspector. Do your stuff. Jerry. Yes, dear? Nothing. Look here. I shouldn't be saying this either. But if you know anything about this, I'd like to know. I can call these lads off, you know, and I'd do it too. For the kid. Well, I, I'd like to help if I could, Mrs. Crane, but uh, I'm sure this is all we could do. Okay, then. I think it's Tommy Rot examining a bunch of children. He promised to be good, so I brought him down to the party. Oh, he's going to be good, is he? Mm-hmm. Vinny, he's not far, Vinny. Ali, mm -hmm. Ali. And you will please go with the others. All right, you go with him, honey. Uh, shall I take care of Grumpy for you? All right. You may bring him along if you wish. Awfully nice, but I don't think he was much of a detective. Why not, dear? Do you know what I'd do if I were a detective? No, what would you do? It's easy. I'd say, I'm the detective now, and I'm asking you questions. I'd say, Mr. Day, did you steal that necklace? And you must answer. Oh. Well? Well, what, dear? Well? You must answer. Did you steal that necklace? No, I didn't steal it. Honor bright? <laughs> You're a funny one. No, you must answer. That's the whole point. Honor bright? Honor bright? And I'd say, that's all I wanted to know, Mr. Day. See? Hi, Tony. This is a fine time of night for you to be jumping around, young Missy. Come here now. Come on. What's the matter, Jerry? Oh, nothing. Nothing. you, young lady. Good night, darling. Good night. All right, Tony, dear. 
But leave this on, please. All right, sweet. Why, Grumpy, what on earth has happened to your neck? <laughs> oh, don't be nervous, my boy, don't be nervous. This will be out of our hands before the day is over. Sunk without a trace. Well, it won't hurt my feelings. I'll run along and consider that uh, in another day you'll be very prosperous. All right, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> Give my love to Penny. <laughs> Listen, Penny, you got to tell us the trouble. I'll fix it for you, kid, you know that. You got to tell us, Penny. Let me alone. Well, she'll tell us when she wants to. You know, Jerry, you can't force a woman to talk. You ought to know that. Darling, what is the matter? You must tell me what's troubling you. Come on, now. Start at the very beginning. It doesn't make any difference how you say it. How could he touch that pity bear? Oh, why not, darling? But after what he did... Did what, darling? Who? Tell me, Penny, what? The necklace. Daddy stole him and then the pity bear's neck. <laughs> You saw him put it there, dear, but he, he didn't steal it. He was hiding it to protect somebody else. No, I saw him with it. I saw him. Penny, it's true, I tell you. I ought to know Penny because I was the one who stole it. I've always wanted one like it, so I took it, that's all. And, and when the police came, I, I got frightened and told him. So he hid it to protect me. Don't stare at me like that. Daddy. Daddy. I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm so sorry. What do you mean? Tony told me. Tony? Told you what, Penny? That she stole it. You said on the right. And I should have believed you. Please, Daddy, forgive me. Please. Huh. Why, of course. Of course, darling. Lean down. I 
I heard the news. The big sacrifice scene with Penny. I don't want any sacrifice scene, so... You didn't tell her? No, not yet. Then don't. You saw what it did to her, to think it was you, and somebody might as well get something out of this. I see your point. I guess... I must like the sacrifice scene, or I'd have told her, wouldn't I? It's very easy to kid yourself, I find. Well, so now you know. Tony, don't get one thing wrong. I still love you. You don't need to say anything, because there isn't anything left to say. If you'd even told me, but lying. You've lost your size, Jerry. And I could never chase trains with a little man. Tony, I do love you. That's very sweet. But we've missed the train. Hello. I, I didn't hear you knock. I, I, I'm going out. As a matter of fact, I'm in rather a hurry. What is it that you want? The necklace. What? Oh, yes. oh, oh, a great many people want that, including Mrs. Crane. But supposing I had it, what makes you think that I'd give it to you? This. <laughs> oh, no, don't be ridiculous. I haven't got it. I'll soon find out. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I... All right. Very well. Do you see anything by any chance? Where'd you get it? You must have dropped it in the backyard. I've been looking for it ever since it was stolen. I mean, ever since it was lost. Oh. And now I take great pleasure in returning it to you. That's very nice of you, mister. I thought it my duty to do something for you after the great favor you've done me. I've done you a favor? Yes because you don't need to tell me how lucky Penny is that you want to take care of her. Oh. Do you still want to? I certainly do. Permanently? That's the only way I would consider it. Now. Then that's the way it will be. So she can grow up into a very lovely lady. You can bet she'll have all there is to give a young man. I'm sure she will. And now you can put me in your debt again. Just one more favor. What's the matter? Mm, stitch in my side. Side ache. Oh, I get them too. Take a deep breath. I'm saving it. Say, what kind of a liar are you? Pretty good. Yeah, it is. No, the thief didn't return it. There wasn't any thief. But I haven't yet discovered the value of safes. If I had, this would never have been hidden in Penny's teddy bear. Now, you can all go back to your places. Oh, Marie. Pack me a grip, please. I'm taking Miss Penny to school. And I wouldn't leave you if you didn't have Tony to take care of you. You needn't worry. She's quite able. Penny! It's time we got the baggage onto the train. All right, come on. 
Aren't you getting out, Jerry? What's the matter, Jerry? Nothing. You're hurt. I'm all right. Wait a minute. We're going to the doctor's. No. After Penny goes. Don't worry. It's all right. Jerry, you got back that necklace. Something else more important now. About Penny. She belongs to Mrs. Crane now. Tony, you who? Tony. Yes, dear. Does she know? You gonna tell her? Not exactly. Not for a long time. When she's used to being with Mrs. Crane and, and away from us. Tony! Look. I got it dirty already. When I get back, we'll have dinner together. Thank you for everything. Just a minute. What's all this excitement about? Oh, I just love you. That's because you're going away. You can't fool me. No. I didn't want to believe you. You know, when you said... Hey. I'm here. Don't I rate some attention? Penny. I'm going on a long, long trip. And if you don't hear from me, don't worry. Where I'm going, there won't be any way of getting word to you. Where's that, Daddy? Oh, it's a place I've never been before. It's a long way off. You have to take boats and trains. <coughs> and, and, and lots of things. Now, now, you better get going now. Oh, gee, Daddy, that sounds elegant. Is Tony going? Yes, I think so. Yes, I'm going. You're wonderful, Daddy. Time to go, Penny. Goodbye, Daddy, darling. Write me as soon as you get back. Come along, Penny. Bon appétit. I'll take very good care of her, Mr. Day. So long, Tony. So long, Daddy. Have a good time. And don't forget, you've got to tell me everything. Now, my friend, for that doctor. No. I think not, Tony. Because we're saying goodbye right here. Jerry, what? I'm going to beat it, Tony. Because that doctor's office means questions. Questions mean the police. And I'm not giving Penny a jailbird for a father. Not now. I got my size back. And they're not taking that away from me. So. It's chasing trains again and dodging cops. But you're not going to be any part of that. Not anymore. So you better get out of here while the going's good, because I'm... I'm on my way. He will be all right now, madame. Jerry, dear, I'm, I'm sorry. I've gone with you chasing trains or anything, but but you were hurt, and, and Penny won't care. Not when she knows how, how swell you've been. Hmm. Those gentlemen in uniform, huh? Hmm. Well, that's all right. They, they don't look so bad. Close. Not nearly as 
big as when you're running away from them. They look kind of funny to me. It's, it's all right, Empress. Honor bright. Honor bright. What, what could they really do to us? <laughs> 